How often should you clean popcorn ceilings? That is a great question. I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Now, the answer is once per year. Once per year because gravity pulls dust down from the sky, not up towards the ceiling. The reason we do clean it once a year is because popcorn ceilings, true to their name, look like popcorn kernels. They've got little bits of stuff that then can catch dust. Now, popcorn ceilings are made of vermiculite and polystyrene, which is a styrofoam plastic kind of thing that you find everyday products like plastic cups and styrofoam take-home containers from the restaurant. Those are polystyrene. And so it's a lightweight material that's kind of like a styrofoam, and it's mixed with vermiculite, which is used in potting soil for horticulture purposes, and it absorbs water really well. And so vermiculite is a mineral that is used to keep water from the roots of plants to keep them from root rot if, if they're overwatered. And so when you mix those two ingredients together and then you spray it on the top of a ceiling, what happens is it makes a deadening sound. So it's kind of like a, a soundproof barrier, which makes popcorn ceilings very effective for apartment complexes and prefab homes. So that's primarily where you're going to see popcorn ceilings. There's one exception. In Florida and in other hurricane-laden areas, there are a lot of homes that will have stucco-like walls, and that's because they're trying to build these really durable little fortresses where when the weather comes, it won't knock the house down. So the ceilings are, have this really durable, soundproof, you know, non-destructible ceiling. Okay, now the cool thing is, how do we clean them and how often? And if we're gonna clean them once a year, what are the rules for cleaning them? The first rule is that you're gonna get everybody out of the house. The reason being is if I'm up here and I'm cleaning the ceiling, my attention is up here. And so if somebody walks through the room and they step on something or they trip me or whatever, I'm still responsible for whatever happens while I'm on the job. So I wanna make sure that if my situational awareness is not around me and that it's up here, that there's no one else at home and no pets that I'm gonna trip on, okay? So once we've cleared the house, now we're ready to begin the project. The very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do the ceilings first because if anything falls from the ceiling, we don't wanna have already cleaned the house and then we gotta go back and clean it again, right? So we're gonna do the ceilings first. Now, before you do any ceilings whatsoever, we wanna test the ceilings for asbestos because back in the early 70s, 80s, one to 10% of the popcorn ceilings or cottage cheese ceilings as they call them, um, had asbestos in them and that is a carcinogen that causes cancer. And so if you were to like dust the ceiling and it knocked off little bits of the ceiling, that would release dust into the air and that was not healthy for you or the environment. Now, since then, they have what's called encasing and it's mandatory in most areas, but they will have a painter come in and the painter has kind of a vinyl paint that they paint over the top of the ceilings and it seals the ceiling in so that when you go to dust it, it doesn't knock the little bits off and it doesn't release that asbestos dust. But you can do a test, and I will leave links in the show notes because there's a do-it-yourself test where you can scrape a little bit of the ceiling off, put it in a baggie, and you send it off to a lab, and within 24 hours, they'll be able to tell you whether or not there is asbestos in the ceiling and should you clean it. Now, if the ceiling is encased and you get the, the green thumb like, hey, you're ready to go, the easiest way to sweep the ceiling, if you will, is with a Swiffer duster, and this is the six foot extender. And I love this because it has the dual head on it, and these are disposable, but it has the trap and lock technology. And so if you extend this up to six feet, should you start to sweep the ceiling, should anything fall into the duster, it's gonna trap it right here and it's not gonna fall onto the ground, right? And so the process for that before we, before we do the dusting, is we wanna make sure that we have personal protective equipment just in case anything should fall from the sky. All right, so the personal protective equipment, we do wanna use our gloves to protect our hands. We do wanna wear our eye safety glasses just so that we're not looking up there and then something should fall in our eye just as a precaution. And then if something does fall, we wanna make sure that we're wearing a hairnet or a shower cap or something like that so it doesn't fall in our hair. So those would be the personal protective equipment items for this job, All right? Once you're on the job and you're, you've cleared the house and the people and the pets are gone and you got your gear on, you're gonna extend your Swiffer duster up six feet and you're just going to vacuum the ceiling just like you would in vacuum lines where you start at one side and then you go to where you just left off and you vacuum again coming back. 
and you're just gonna sweep the ceiling in streaks towards you, okay? So that is the process that you go through. Now, every once in a while, you might find a situation where someone has opened like a can of soda and it splurted up onto the ceiling and there are spots. The way you get rid of the spots is very carefully. And if you can get out of it, my recommendation is do. But if you are required to clean that, my suggestion is, and here's a good way to do it, you're gonna get a paint roller, and this is just a regular paint roller with a soft paint uh, roller uh, attachment, and you're going to get a paint container. And this has the, you know, squeeze it out as you go capabilities. Okay, now the, the stuff that we're gonna use in here for this is going to be a bleach mixture. So you do wanna put a drop cloth down because if you spill this on the customer's carpet, you will be buying them a brand new carpet, okay? So be very, very careful should you decide to do this project. And like I said, if the homeowner can do it and you can get out of it, sign a waiver, don't do it, okay? The mixture is one part bleach to four parts water. So if you have two cups, half of one of those cups will be bleach. You're only going to pour enough in here to get your roller wet. Don't have lots in here so that if you accidentally step on it, there's bleach that goes flying or anything, just the bare minimum. All right, now, with your gloves on, you're going to squeeze out all the water to the very end until there's not a single drop left. So you just have a damp roller that has the damp mixture of the bleach on it, okay? So you've got a damp bleach dipped roller. Now, that said, this has regular threads on it. This is just a regular uh, paint roller that you find at Home Depot or Lowe's. I'm gonna use my doka pole and my doka pole has regular threads on it. And so you can just screw this on. And this is where it comes in. You know, I said no extra water. If there's any extra water right now is the time it's gonna go flying. So you wanna make sure there's no extra water whatsoever. Trust me, you don't wanna make mistakes on this. Right now that you have your paint roller that's damp, dipped in your bleach mixture, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna go up to the spot on the ceiling and you're going to paint slowly with your mixture over the stain. The reason being is if you paint slowly, it's not gonna to try to squeeze out or flip any water, right? Now, do you remember how I said the paint roller can go flying and it can leave little bits of bleach? We don't want that at all, right? So go very slowly and be very careful. Okay, so that is the process. Now, once, once per year by just dusting it, you should be able to maintain it. That said, if you are a homeowner and you have popcorn ceilings, I recommend that you do not smoke inside your house because nicotine, if it gets on the ceiling, is gonna be next to impossible to clean. Now, if you have a wood-burning stove, I not with a popcorn ceiling. Okay, because it's gonna be impossible to clean the soot off of your ceiling. It's just, it's gonna get in every nook and every cranny. And you can vacuum the ceiling with a vacuum attachment, one of those little tiny vacuum attachments and it will take you forever. And then as soon as you light up your wood burning stove again, you'll have more soot up there and it's, it's a repeat process. So no smoking in the house, no wood burning stoves in the house. Do not cook bacon grease or fry stuff in the house. Use an air fryer, close the microwave door if you're cooking bacon. Be very, very cautious because any grease that gets out is going to be next to impossible to clean. All right, so now you know about popcorn ceilings. Now you know how often to clean popcorn ceilings. And if you are interested in cleaning two-story tall ledges and seeing other uses of the doka pole, click this next video right here, and I will show you how to do that next. All right, until then, leave your questions and comments in the notes below. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.